In this video, we'll learn about the multivariate normal distribution. We'll start with covariance matrices and build our way up there. So the covariance matrix of a random vector with n components uh, with mean vector mu is the matrix sigma, it's n by n, uh, also denoted variance or covariance of x, whose entries, sigma ij, are just the covariance between xi and xj. So here's the formula for it. And you'll see that it kind of looks like e of x minus mu quantity squared, or e of x squared minus e of x quantity squared, um, but in vector notation. And as promised, here's the covariance matrix. And along the diagonal, you can replace the covariance of xi with itself with just the variance of xi. You'll note that this covariance matrix is symmetric, meaning sigma ij is equal to sigma ji and contains variances along the diagonal. So for example, covariance x2, x1 is the same as covariance x1, x2. So we'll do an example. If x1 through xn are iig with mean mu and variance sigma squared, we've seen earlier that the mean vector will just be the vector of all mu's, or just mu times the vector of all ones. And the covariance matrix will look like this. So sigma squared along the diagonal, because each of these random variables has variance sigma squared. And zero everywhere else, because um, all, the variable, all the variables are independent. So the covariance will be zero. And so you get sigma squared times identity matrix. Uh, so properties of expectation of variance also hold for random vectors. So you'll notice that if x is a random vector and a and b are constants, it kind of preserves linearity of expectation. Also, this variance of ax plus b kind of looks like a squared variance of x. Okay, so now for the special case of independent normals, if x and y are independent and normal random variables, their joint density function we know is the product of their individual ones, and this is nothing special, just plugging in the density for a univariate Gaussian. And the mean vector mu is just mu x mu y, and the covariance matrix has uh, their variances along the diagonal, and zero everywhere else because, the because they're independent. And so we'll say xy has a bivariate normal distribution, and we'll write that xy is normal, and the two is because there's two dimensions, and has mean vector mu and covariance matrix sigma. So how do we generate a more general one? Let z1 and z2 be iid standard normals, and mu x mu y sigma squared x sigma squared y and rho be scalar parameters. I'm going to use these parameters and these independent standard normals to construct a bivariate Gaussian x comma y. How do we do that? So first, x will scale by, we'll take z1, scale it by sigma x, and add mu x. What this will do is make x have a normal distribution with mean mu x and variance sigma squared x. You can uh, play with the transformation. And y is uh, a mixture of z1 and z2. You can see with the correlation here. And uh, has a scaled by sigma y and also shifted by mu y. So what we get is that marginally, x and y are both Gaussian with their respective mean and variances that we wanted to have, and the covariance is actually what rho um, by definition of by this construction. So that is the mean vector is mu x mu y, the covariance matrix has sigma squared x and sigma squared y on the diagonal, and the covariance is uh, we just multiply all sides here by sigma x sigma y, and so we get rho sigma x sigma y. And so if you use the multivariate change of variables formula from 4.4, you can turn the simple product of standard normal PDFs into the PDF as a bivariate normal, which is not important, but here it is. And we'll say x and y are a bivariate normal with mean vector mu and covariance matrix sigma. So here's a plot of what a bivariate normal kind of looks like. So here are samples from a bivariate normal. Here's the marginal distribution of x, marginal distribution of y, and this is the covariance ellipse shape. And then if you wanted to see the PDF in three dimensions, this is kind of what it would look like. So let's see what this covariance matrix actually does. So let's look at the identity covariance matrix. So they have the same variance one and no correlation. The, these are samples from a bivariate normal. It looks like this. If I change the variance uh, on the x to be a bit bigger, then you'll get a stretch in the x direction. And similarly, if you do the same for y, you'll get a stretch in the vertical direction. Uh, now look at these as 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. You'll notice it's like positively sloped, but it gets like tighter and longer. Uh, same negatively, you get, a, you get a negative slope, and then as you make it more and more negative, it gets uh, tighter. And pause here if you want to see more examples. So we'll say that our random vector x has a multivariate normal with uh, distribution with mean vector mu and covariance matrix sigma, and notice the n here is for the number of dimensions, if it has this PDF. And this is kind of uh, intimidating, but it actually looks very similar to the univariate Gaussian PDF. And except with matrix operations like transpose and uh, mul matrix multiplication here instead. And so uh, another important thing about multivariate normals is, in general, for any random variables x and y, if they're independent, then their covariance is zero. We showed this in the covariance lecture. Um, but if they're multivariate Gaussian variables and the covariance is zero, then they're guaranteed to be independent. 